All right, moped fettlers, I'm here in uh, Whitby this week where the most rusty van in the world lives. This is Sneaton Castle and I'm here with work doing a school trip. So I've brought something along to show you. First of all though, I'm gonna show you around my room. This is the driver's suite in Sneaton Castle and it's quite tidy really, I'm quite pleased with it. Even the bathroom's quite palatial really for a driver's suite, so I'm fairly chuffed with that. Got everything you need, that shower is amazing. And here's the view out the window. It's not the best in the world. There are better views than this in Whitby. However, I did get to wake up and watch the bloke operating the crane this morning, so that was quite nice. And uh, hopefully the weather will clear up. This is the drunken octopus. About half 11 at night, it wanders around going, fight you for a fiver, you fucker. You may be wondering what the hell all of this has actually got to do with mopeds, but uh, we're here in the castle and I got a couple of packages just before we set off. So I just slung them in the side of the coach and uh, I thought I've got a week to have a look at them. So, approaching the coach now, what do you think that might be? It's definitely the right way up. We have here a Gorelli Concord, or most of one. There's the old number plate for it. Unfortunately, I couldn't retain that number, but that plate will look nice on my wall in the workshop when it's built. And we have a, a very well packed box of bits. We'll start off with this, because these are quite hard to come by in decent condition for a decent price. And I did get all of this for a decent price. That's the rear light, it's an old round CEV one. Uh, and they generally can go for quite a lot of money. They do seem to be quite overpriced because you can't get reproduction ones anymore. I've now got enough of them for uh, both my bikes, although I do need a number plate bridge for one of them still. So, unless there's one in here, of course. He's dismantled the uh, headlight for me to fit it all in. This was all shipped uh, and it was just the uh, maximum dimensions and weight to be shipped without the price doubling. So he's, he's done his best to sort of split it all down for me because he's a bit of a legend like that. What's that then? I bet that's the speedo. Not that. That. Let's have a look at that. It should be a CV beast. Oh yeah, look at that. Is that, that's a 50 mile an hour speedo. No, 60 mile an hour speedo. That is optimism right there. It is a two speed. I've got uh, a few Gorelli Concords already. I've got one that almost works. I've got one that's a viable project, one that isn't, and then this one. And I think the not viable project one uh, and this can get together and make something fun. Here's the frame. Quite nice colour that. I don't know if it's been powder coated or something. It looks like it may have had uh, a bit of powder coating in the past or been resprayed. He stripped the forks down for me to fit it all in the package. It's very good of him. Sorry about shaky cam. I'm overdubbing this afterwards, so I've no idea what I was thinking, just flailing around with the camera. Also, my mate Jamie, who was a bit bewildered as to why anyone would want to put this on YouTube anyway, was running around after bits of polystyrene that were blowing away for me so as not to pollute the castle. So thanks, Jamie. So here we are, another day, another destination. Today I've took some Lincoln City supporters to Grimsby Town Football Club uh, in convoy with some of my colleagues here. And uh, we had a police escort with outriders and everything. We're going through red lights and what would come on the radio while we were tramming along? Limp biscuit rolling. It was excellent. Uh, anyway, so the Gorelli does actually need some engine work to it. Apparently it's seized and the Woodruff keys snapped, so I'll have to check all that out, see if there's any damage. And stuff like wheels and mud guards I can get off one of my other projects. So let's have a look at that now. So I'm kind of re-unboxing it again now at home uh, in the back of the van and I'll fast forward past all the boring bits but um, there's the rear light and the uh, inside of the headlight and there's the horn now it's a special six volt AC horn that actually fits inside the headlight unit and I think the one on one of my other bikes is blown so that'll be quite handy for that to make one decent working unit. There's the other half of the headlight shell, and it's cracked, unfortunately, but it's not within the bit where it'll let water in, so it might still be useful, although not very uh, good. That's a bit cracked as well. I think that happened in transit, I'm assuming. So this is the amazingly optimistic 60 mile an hour speedo. I'm not entirely sure if that uh, came original on it or not. I'll have to check one of my other ones. Where are we? Yep, 60 mile an hour. And apparently only done under 1,400 miles, which is quite nice, unless it's been around the clock. And that's not a good sign, is it? That is the clutch pressure plate, I believe. Mm -mm. Let's 
to get the beast. Yeah, someone's been in there. Let's get this beast out. There's the intake manifold. That is a later type 1980s uh, flywheel cover in black. And that is an earlier type 1970s uh, clutch cover. So that's weird. And it's even got a little dipstick look. That's cool. I didn't know that. Now, I've never been in the clutch of one of these before. So that's the clutch nut off. Let's explore. There's the clutch basket. There's the starter clutch pressure plate, I believe. A lot of this is just guesswork. Those little knob things there are the rubber guys, which are uh, quite often uh, tend to go dry and rubbish, and uh, they're a big failure point of Gorelli clutches. In fact, all the rubber stuff inside Gorelli clutches is notorious for failure. Um, that actually doesn't look to be too bad, but what happens is... Oh, yeah, don't let me forget that. That goes on there, a little thrust washer thing. Um, yeah, what tends to happen is if any... If the wrong oil's used or any moisture gets into it, then it, it makes the uh, rubber all brittle and unusable. Uh, and it's uh, quite expensive to replace, I believe, as well. I think it's about 50 quid, something like that, for the rubber parts. Uh, if you can find somewhere that does them. But yeah, it seems alright. You're looking for milkiness in the oil, which it does look slightly milky. And it has to be 20 weight non-detergent oil. It's non-negotiable. It's mandatory. It's got to be 20 weight non-detergent. The detergent knackers it, knackers the rubber, and 20 rate, uh, 20 weight is the right weight. You, you might be able to faff about with the weight with um, if you're doing a racing clutch or something, but you have to find non-detergent oil. That's the main part of it. And it's in England anyway. It comes in vintage oil cans, which is quite fun. It's uh, it's generally used for vintage engines. So there's that again. Look, I notice one of the rubber guys is longer than the rest, so I'm thinking bits might have snapped off. And then you have to look out for little bits of rubber in the oilways in between the teeth of the uh, cogs as well. So it does get a bit fruity. I'm not sure if there's any bits missing on this clutch, because I'm not entirely sure how they work. Um, I can't see any bit that would be centrifugal. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work like that but that's just I've no idea how it works <laughs> essentially uh, so let's try and put it back together and see what happens I suspect this might end up being a parts engine in fact I've got what I believe to be either a working engine or an almost working engine that will also do for this bike because it's the correct one and it's it seems to be in better condition than this however this is the one that came with the bike originally, so it might work out better if the engine and frame numbers match when I come to re-register it, because unfortunately it doesn't look like I can retain that um, original registration number, unfortunately. So let's put it all back together and see if we can make it work. <sighs> Thrust washer! Obviously! You go on there work okay so that's more or less all back together what happens is you the cable moves that rod which then pushes in on the middle of there and that somehow operates that uh, clutch plate that uh, that was there the single clutch plate which is plain on one side and has um, uh, friction material on the inside so that's how the starter clutch works at least. How the rest of it works is a total enigma. Right, this is the flywheel side. Someone's been hammering on this and as you can see, look, there's no woodruff key in there. It, I suspect they might have bent the crank as well or caused some damage. I'll have to take the flywheel off to check it out properly. Uh, I think I do need a new set of coils for one of my Gorelli, so I might be able to use that. I don't know what that hole is next to the intake. It might be for oil injection, but I think on these it was a special pump that you dumped a certain amount in the tank with a pump on the side of it. It was uh, making a bit of a conrody sound when I did that, which makes me think there's no piston, and I can't really tell you know, that looks a bit like a conrod, doesn't it? Yeah, I suspect there's no piston in there, and the conrod's just been flapping around in the cylinder. Let's have a look in the exhaust if we can. Yep, yeah, there's your problem. That'll do it. Yep, yeah, she's uh, 
unfortunately not going to have much compression like that. I'll have to see what I can do about that too, I suppose. It's frame time. Let's get the uh, fork tubes in. Or, I, I suppose they're fork tubes, the fork things. Let's get the forks together. <laughs> All right, I suppose we'll have a bit of a closer look at this. Right, I've just put the nuts and everything in so they don't go missing, but this isn't... I <laughs> foolishly thought it might have been powder coated, but no, it's uh, been brush painted at some point, and not very well either. But that's good in a way, because it means I get... Although I do prefer original paint, I don't feel quite so bad about stripping original paint off if it's not original and then I can give it a totally different uh, colour scheme hopefully, especially if I'm registering it from scratch because they don't... It, if it's already on their system as being blue and then I change it to green or red or something then they're gonna know, but if it's uh, scratch registered, maybe not. This is... Uh, the blue one is a viable project, that's a V3, so it's the manual hand change gears one which is really rare. This is the parts bike V3 which was completely shot, the engine's ruined on it. Uh, and I've got most of the bits I need off that for the V3. There's the engine look. That was never going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, but it has yielded some spares. Um, and I'm going to use most of the rest of it, rather than waste it, to go on this tank. Oh, God, that tank's not nice. To go on this uh, blue one that I've just got. So hopefully I should be able to make two out of the one. So I need things like that mudguard front wheel. I do have the rear wheel somewhere. Dampers. Uh, book rack. Unfortunately, I don't have a seat for this. Uh, I think I left it at my old house, actually, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to see if I can get something similar or maybe put a single seat on it. Um, but, yeah, that might yield something. Let's have a look, see if we've got any handlebars with it as well. Yeah, handlebars, switch gear looks a bit rough, but uh, we should be able to do something with that. It's quill stem handlebars as well, so they're fairly easy to change, just one bolt and a hammer. Um, and the grips are all fine as well, look. So, yeah, I'm sure we can do something with that. Um, oh, yeah, let's have a look at this speedo. Yeah, look, this is a 60 mile an hour speedo as well. Even though uh, this bike clearly isn't capable of 60 mile an hour. Although, having said that, with it being the manual gears one, it's probably more capable than the automatic. Okay, that's it. See ya. Alright, my handsome. Is this guy bothering you? I'll bloody have him.